Good evening and welcome to MFTB Sports Channel and we're today doing our Hungarian Grand Prix review and then in a bit we'll be previewing the upcoming Belgium Grand Prix this weekend. We've got a back-to-back -back before we go into a whole month without F1. Yes. But we've got some good content planned for that month where we're going to do a few different things. Um, I'll probably mention a few at the end when yeah. we've got our little what's coming up next Tom segment. <laughs> Love it, I do that. <laughs> so we're going to preview this weekend's um, Belgian Grand Prix in a moment, but we'll review Hungary. And we gave the race rating a 7 out of 10. We did. Um, driver of the day, we voted Lewis Hamilton, which I think was based on your boy breaking the record. Breaking the record, but also how he held off drivers. His tyres weren't working that great. Yeah, and even though he got hit by a kamikaze driver. Yeah. He still managed. They make the Mercedes well, do they? May yes. not. It may not be the quickest car, but the suspension's good. Yeah, it? built like a bit of a tank. Um, and um, disappointment of the race, we had Mr. Verstappen. Yeah, very disappointed in him. Uh, which was generally just more than anything is about his attitude, because several things have come out which we'll cover during the course of our race review. But oh, Max, we had a bit of a bad temper this week, couldn't they? Didn't really go to plan at all. His toys certainly come out of the pram. And even though he's refusing to apologise, you're just telling me off camera that Red Bull were doing it for him. Yeah, I I just thought it was terrible. The way, no one deserves his race engineer. How he still wants to work with Matt? So I don't know. Yeah, no that, one deserves to be spoken to like that. You know what I'm like in the real yeah. world. And if that was me, I'd be like, you know what? You're on your own. <laughs> See how you can drive a car for 70 laps on your own, mate. Yeah, <laughs> I think I, I'm pretty calm. But I think I would, if if someone spoke to me like that, I'd have said, "See you later." Yeah, not 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 good by Max, and that's why we marked him as the disappointment of the race. Not really through race performance, other than his kamikaze moment, because we'll cover why he was very unhappy throughout the weekend. But Obviously, really, it all came down to, with the race, it came down to lap one. Oscar snatching the start, really. Um, I think we can safely say that, clearly, McLaren had some kind of an agreement pre-race. They must have. And I'm so glad that Lando done that. Yeah, at least he'd done the right thing, because I think the backlash would have been quite heavy. I think for him as well. I think fans would have turned on him a little bit, and I don't think he's got the mindset to cope with that. Hmm. Yeah, he, did, he he beats himself up a lot, and then that's why I was quite surprised to see how ruthless he really was considering being. Yeah. Being but, how hard he is on himself. But our friends at um, Sports, Sports, Rewind. Sports Rewind Digital, they're going to be happy. They will do, yeah, because this is the first Aussie win, if I remember rightly, since Monza 2021, Danny Rick for McLaren. Yeah. So, McLaren. Yeah, so, uh, and that was a 1-2 as well. That was McLaren's last 1-2. It was Monza 2021. So, yeah. The, the guys are going to be happy. And while we're on that note, if you get a chance, go and visit their channel because it has got some really good stuff on there. Yeah, Sports Rewind Digital. There are our fellow content creators that do a bit of F1, uh, but they do a lot of other sports as well, representing Australia. So give them a, give them a shout. So they'll certainly be uh, chuffed to have their, their home homeboy win uh good to see another aussie up the front of the grid and potentially depending on what we've got covered in the news there could be another aussie at the front of the grid soon kind of 50 50 mm. one way or the other it's the exit door the promotion one or, yeah, the other. one or the other um so yeah so the race really was won by oscar really at the first corner because it seemed that they had an agreement that whoever got to the first corner first was going to go on and win the race which lando seemed to get reminded of a few times during the course of the race <laughs> <laughs> um Obviously, Max really was the other thing as well. I put on the notes that he's a uh, bold move around the outside of both the McLarens, which he then decided to throw hissy fit number one, shall we say. Yeah, so according to Max, it's now okay to push drivers off the track. But at the end of the day, drivers, Short have, memory, isn't it? drivers have now got used to what Max does and now they're using it against Max and he doesn't like it. How about time? At the end of the day, if one can play dirty, all can play dirty in my game. So it's about, and I think this proof is telling really the fact of that now he's starting to find that everyone's starting to use his own powers against him. Now we're starting to see stropping Max. Yes. Um, and he didn't want to relent, did he? Because he waited until the fourth lap. I think he'd done it when his team said, you need to give that play, because they knew it was being under investigation. So there's going to be a time penalty or he gives that space back now. Which I think would have been a five second five time, second, wouldn't it? Yeah. So, and I'm surprised really, because they didn't really say that he gained an advantage on Lewis, but the way he was fighting with the two McLarens, 
Lewis would have had a good chance yeah. to have got him. So I think Lewis probably lost out a little bit there. Yeah. Eh? But he made up for it later on in the race, so that's cool. Which makes you happy. Yeah, happy man. So. I did when that crash happened, I was like, oh no. I should say at this point as well, being that Lando uh, didn't win the race, I was that close. The one bloody week I don't back Oscar Piastri to pick up the win. Because I think I've backed him at least twice. He bloody wins it on the week that I back Lando. Yeah. So I'm still 1-0 down to him. Not good so far. No. So you've still got your Lewis prediction right. We'll do race predictions in a bit for the yeah. next one. Um, so yeah, so not very good from uh, from Max around the outside on lap one. Um, and then obviously then the action really kind of then jumped uh, to lap 41, where Lewis, not really much happened for the first 40 laps really. A few overtakes, not much. Carlos pulled off a good one on Fernando yeah. from what I remember, but there wasn't a lot going on. And then by that point, Gasly's race was over with. He was yeah. the only retirement of the race for Alpine in another dodgy weekend. Uh, but where it all started kicking off and falling apart for Max again was when Lewis on lap 41 jumped for Stappen, which is then when we got angry Max. So we had to throw toys out of the pram, Max. Mm -hmm. Now we've got angry Max, um, where obviously he started ripping his team apart about he's trying to make the best of a bad situation, weren't he? Yeah, the strategy. So they've done it all wrong. But the, uh, the undercut is very powerful at that circuit. So, yeah, it just did, didn't do him any favour, did they? No. And he made them know it as well. And I always think at the end of the day, you got to be a bit grateful because how many races have the team won him? The one weekend they get a little, he had a three second pit stop. And was it David Croft said on commentary? Oh, that's not a good pit stop for a team that's used to doing yeah. sub two seconds. Well, hey ho, some of you get right, some of you get, I think he just threw his toys out of the pram too much for just one bad pit stop strategy. Um, and then obviously uh, I picked up a few things as well. That we had uh, Oscar run off the road on lap 33. Yeah, put a lot of gravel on the track actually. He did. A lot of gravel. Which is what allowed uh, Lando to close up, which caused all the shenanigans later on. Um, and then um, Lando then done his pit stop to undercut Oscar. Yeah. Uh, which ended up happening on lap 46. So because of him going off into the gravel, that closed the time up, which then allowed Lando to get the undercut, which yeah. solved all the... Well, which I think they brought Lando in first. I know Piastri should have had the call, but I think they brought him in first to cover Lewis. Mm -hmm. And then things just got a little bit tricky for McLaren. Yeah, yeah. T <laughs> team management at its best for McLaren. Uh, and then lap 48 was when Lando, then after the pit stop and him getting a successful undercut after Oscar P, that's when they, they decided to give Lando his first team order. Yeah. Let Oscar buy. And time went past, and another lap went past, and he and didn't then, let him buy. They, then they checked the radio communication. <laughs> yeah, sure. okay. you've seen the full transcript. <laughs> yeah. Just want to do a radio check, Lando. Yep, all clear. <laughs> If I can hear you, I'm just bloody ignoring you. Um, and then uh, lap 54 was when Max had his massive rant. So that's when we got pissed off, Max. Yeah. When he said, I'm trying to rescue a result from this bad strategy. And he managed to get past Charles Leclerc. Yeah. And started hunting down Lewis, which was like Jaws. Dur -dur -dur -dur, trying to get his next victim. I think Netflix is going to be interesting next, next year. I'm looking forward to Drive yeah. to Survive. That's going to be good. It's going to be a good series this year. Um, and then on lap 54, there was more Lando instructions. Come on, Lando, you've got to let Oscar through. Do the right thing. Uh, lap 58, Lando then received another warning. He had about four warnings yeah. on, didn't he? So he weren't playing ball. Um, and then on lap 63 was when we then got Kamikaze Max. Yeah. Maybe his blurred vision was doing a little bit of trouble. Uh, like Lewis said, Lewis knew Lewis's trajectory. He knew that he was going around that corner. He said, I looked at me mirror and I knew that Max weren't going around that corner. There's no way he, despite the fact that Lewis was there, there was no way he was going to make that corner. No. Not in a hope in hell's chance. He weren't going to make that corner. So he overshot it anyway. He just decided to basically use Lewis's front wheels as a seesaw. Yeah, and then blame Lewis. Yeah. Saying that Lewis turned into him when he didn't. He yeah, did and it's done the analysis, isn't yeah. it? You were telling me earlier. Because um, didn't you say about he's taking that line every lap? Yeah, and the, the wheel, like Lewis says, I did not turn my wheels. But they were turned a little bit because he was going into the corner, but he didn't turn even more. He just 
they had a Red Bull going over him. Yeah, and then, which is not the first time. Anthony Davidson done a good one on the sky pad as well when he turned around and said it looks as though Max veers to the left, but he doesn't. It's just a natural curvature of the track. It's an optical illusion. He was just going straight. <laughs> yeah. And just totally overdone it. So then that's when Max decided to do a little bit of a flying lesson and yeah. ended up on... Uh, I was so hoping that Max's car was not drivable. And they were both lucky. I mean, I thought... Because it took him a little bit of a while to get going again, didn't it? And I thought he picked up a puncher. Yeah. So the fact that he didn't even get a puncher of it, and then he didn't even get a penalty. No. <laughs> FIA covers itself in glory. Um, they used to call it Ferrari International Assistance. I think they should call it RB International Assistance now. Yeah, there's... Red Bull have something with that FIA. It goes back to 2001, oh, which God, I'm still a bit of bitter about. 2021, here we go. But we won't go into that. <laughs> that could be here a while. Yeah, we, we ain't got enough content to be able to do that one. <laughs> yeah, just be a, a rad. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, and then eventually, after we had that one, um, we had the uh, the childish comment as well. Yeah, which the was... The Yeah, saying that he wasn't going to get involved with other teams. They're going to let the stewards do it. And it's childish. Well, I'm not going to do it over the Radio Max. It's just become childish. And I'm like, hang on a minute. What did you do the first four laps of the race? When you're going backwards and forwards about yeah. who's who's got what advantage, when Red Bull I think they realised that they'd been copped and they were like, we better just keep our mouth shut here. Um, I think they realised that too much radio messages was being played out on their behalf and McLaren. <laughs> and then when on lap 67, after Lando had pulled out a near six second gap, and the team turned around and said, Lando, you have made your point. Please do what's right. You're going to need the team and you're going to need Oscar for a championship challenge. Eventually, on lap 67, he let Oscar throw. Yeah. In a no doubt about it, slow down the straight move, a bit reminiscent of Michael Schumacher with Rubens Barrichello. Well, I think they were saying that he slowed down on the straight to get the DRS. <laughs> he could have passed him again. <laughs> and he was right up there. He was like eight tenths of a second behind him, weren't he? I know. I was like, oh, God. I suppose if you let him pass, and then you you've got the overtake you can't do it again what's stopping you well yeah team orders would be one thing though eh? oh i tell you it would have gone down like a lead balloon wouldn't it yeah and he's he's took a swipe at lewis as well didn't he who lando in the driver's press corner room didn't you see that no? where he chucked his hat on the floor no he chucked his hat on the floor um and then lewis said to him christ you've got a um, fast car and lando turned around and go you've had a fast car seven years and Lewis goes, I wasn't complaining, I was complimenting your car. Oh. Oh. And to see a bit of a different side to Lando these last but his few hats, weeks. Uh, you know the podium hats they wear? That was on the podium thing that they put their helmets on. Instead of putting on his head, he just got it and went pop on the floor. Not quite as bad as Nico Rosberg. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but obviously, eventually, he did do the right thing. So Oscar Piastri secured his uh, his first ever career win. Obviously, he got a sprint race victory in Qatar last year, yeah. didn't he? So he's finally got himself a big one. Um, and then Lando finished second with Lewis Hamilton third. Which, as we say, he broke the uh, the record for was it 200 Two, podiums? First, it? first driver in history to win a race after 200. No, 200 to win a get on the podium after 200 podiums. Let's shall we start again? Yeah, that, yeah, that's the, the first driver in history to have 200 podiums. There well, we no, go. Second time <laughs> round. I'm not editing that bit out either. Um, that, that was the record. <laughs> Um, and then eventually uh, Ferrari in the end, bit of an anonymous weekend really, but at least it weren't terrible for them. It wasn't terrible, they are back there but still not where they've been. They were showing, uh, Sky Sports have done a good thing actually, they were showing the graph over the last seven races and the two cars that are up there for points gained is it goes McLaren, uh, Mercedes, then Red Bull and Ferrari. And Mercedes, uh, McLaren have certainly closed that gap now. Yeah, they have. And the, the problem is, is Red Bull haven't got a second driver to help him out at the moment. No, we'll, we'll get to him in a minute because I, I, I remember your video that you've done. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so Charles finished fourth. Carlos finished in sixth place. Um, over the So, at least it was a double points at a Hungarian yeah. Grand Prix for him. And obviously, they've ripped off all their updates, haven't they, that they bought in in Canada? Yeah. Um, and they've kind of gone back to the drawing board because they've got a few issues because it's caused a lot of porpoising and issues. 
So maybe going a couple of steps backwards will be better for the long term. And Lewis would be hoping that that's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, as we say, Max Verstappen, no penalty, finished in fifth position. Um, how he didn't get a five or ten second penalty, but they declared it a race, a race incident. Uh, your man that you done your video on, Sergio Perez in seventh. And I put a note there that you're like, crashed in qualifying. Crashed in qualifying, yeah. He, uh... he had to get 37 points this weekend. Well, over the next two weekends. Without... Yeah, well, yeah. 25 points for a win and you've got to get 37 next week. Yeah. Well, he got <laughs> a couple of points this weekend. Yeah. He got a few, but Max opened up the gap even more. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so if it's true what they're saying about he's not allowed to be more than... 100 points away. 100 right? points away, and also no lower than fifth in the Drivers' Championship by the mid-season break. Big worries for Sergio's career, that's and not... obviously he stacked it in qualifying. Yeah, it's not looking rosy. Not looking rosy at all. Uh, but what do you reckon? Do you reckon it would be demotion or out? I reckon they'll... I reckon for this season, they'll swap them. There we go. Then I reckon... Next season. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Still very mixed messages coming out, because obviously Red Bull have turned around and said about that they will make no comment at the moment, but they need both drivers to be performing. And Sergio's turned around and said, I will be seeing out my contract until the end of 2026. So still very mixed messages come out of Red Bull. So someone obviously clearly ain't telling Sergio what he's got to do to raise his game. He ain't going to be a Red Bull till 2026. Nah. He may, he may be at Red Bull till the 26th of August, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't see him being there. They might give him till the end of the season, just clinging on by the cling of his nails, but... I don't reckon they will. That's why they're saying with Danny Rick at the moment. It's kind of... Excuse me. 50-50. He's either got the chance of promotion or out, mm. out of the sport altogether. Uh, but even Danny Ricardo's turned around and said he senses something mega and he's trying to go for it and he's got to kick some ass, as he said. Yeah, that worked this weekend as well. Yeah, very, they are going on the notes. There's a lot of people not very happy about this race. Uh, George Russell finished eighth, Yuki Tsunoda finished ninth and Lance Stroll picked up a point for Aston Martin in tenth. Uh, which you done a video on earlier. That's an interesting one as well. I think McLaren took up all the radio. McLaren and Verstappen took up all the radio time. Because we didn't hear that one. Yeah, apparently. Because um, you covered the story, didn't you? Apparently, didn't they tell Lance to get out of the way? Yeah. And he wouldn't. No, he he done the he done what Norris did. didn't talk, but he didn't talk at all. I'd just be like, oh, sorry, I can't, can't hear you. I'd just be like, oh, yeah, oh, well, never mind. <laughs> Technical difficulties over the other side of the <laughs> um, So, yeah, so Lance Stroll to fire team orders, which obviously is going to piss the uh, El Matador off. Oh, Fernando, he went very happy. You, and... you don't want to pee him off because no. he, he, he will. Well, we've seen what happens with your teammates. You don't want to pee him off. I know, obviously. It's... The only thing that could, call, could tame Alonso a little bit is Stroll's dad owns the team and pays Alonso's wages. Yeah, there's that, but they did say during the coverage, didn't they, on the race coverage, that Fernando's looking very dejected. Mm. And little did he realise that when he signed his contract extension with Aston Martin, that he'd be fighting with Haas. I think he thought when he signed his the, deal. the beginning of last season, they are fighting with Red Bull. Yeah, big fall from grace from them. So much for their five-year plan. It's going well. Yeah, going really well. <laughs> um, and then uh, Haas weren't on it this weekend, uh, just outside the points, but... Not quite as bad as Williams, Steak and Alpine, who were all nowhere this weekend. Very much uh, cut adrift those three teams this year, this weekend. Uh, and then in summary, I put down in our race notes, obviously Lando wasn't happy after the race. He tried to make the best of it and turn around and say, well, you know, it's fantastic. And McLaren got their first win since, their first one, two since 2021. Yeah. Their first front row lockout since 2012. So it's fantastic for them. And even Lewis turned around and said it's great to see his old yeah, team did. up there. He did, yeah. Um, but obviously Lando, you could just see he's just not happy. But he held his hands up and said he screwed his own race in the first lap. Yeah. In first corner, first lap, done. Uh, Alonso clearly not happy with his results. Danny Ricardo was another one who's fuming. Apparently he said that his strategy stitched him up. Yeah, his team. 
effed everything up for him. Yeah, I keep thinking every time I say strategy, I keep thinking about someone else. Um, and then Gasly was the only retirement of the uh, of the race. Um, and it, I just put down in our race summary notes, really, it was the weekend of complaints. As also Total Wolf has said that everybody is to blame for the lack of performance at Mercedes this weekend. Which I thought was a bit... Ooh. Yeah, he come out in qualifying, didn't he? But Mercedes didn't have the best start, considering one of their sponsors brought the entire world down. Yeah. Which it did affect them, because they had a picture of their pit wall and had the unhappy face. Which we did laugh at, because they're not being funny. It was their sponsor last time that took the whole cryptocurrency world yeah. down. So maybe they've picked up the Hass F1 curse of the dodgy American sponsors. Yeah, so... I wonder if these people have got big, long, bushy beards that they, they need to avoid. Oh, yeah. Hmm? Rich, Rich energy. You never hear anything anymore now, do you? No, apparently they were going to go massive, and I. I don't, I don't, I've never seen one of their cans no. ever. So much for sponsoring an F1 team. They were going to buy a football team as well, but I can't remember who. But they kind of disappeared. Um, and then also in the weekend of everybody complaining as well, Esteban Ocon also complained about their bad pit stop strategy as well, um, and how it undermined his race. Yeah. So everybody had a lot of strategy complaints this weekend. I think that's pretty much really the story of the race. Yeah. A lot of complaints. Lando closed the championship gap. So definitely game on for the championship this year. As far as the constructors championship, I definitely think myself personally, McLaren are the favourites. Yeah, and I still think that Lando's got the championship as well. No, I, think, I, I think. think Verstappen's head's gone. I'd we'll love it. Oh, he has. That. Yeah, we'll it find has. out more out at Spa, I think, as well. Especially as that's a, a home race for him. Home race, and you, you have that first corner, and he's Kamikaze Max's back, so... Kamikaze Max. He'll be pushing people off, guarantee it, because he's already said in his radio, so the, to let the FIA know this is what we'll do from now on. Mm, yeah, I mean, one thing that's definitely guaranteed with it all is I definitely think we have got ourselves a spicy second half of the season. We've got a, a Lewis and Max part two with Max and Lando. Yeah, and now is the time, not necessarily with his teammate, but now is the time that Lando starts stepping up and starts getting a bit broader shoulders and like, you're not going to bully me off the track anymore, mate. You made the mistake once, you're not going to do it again. Yeah. But he does need Oscar Piastri's support and help in trying to fight the Red Bulls, especially if they do replace Sergio Perez, if they get a better driver in that second car. Yeah. So he does need Oscar Piastri on side. So I was pleased for Oscar and I just thought it was a fantastic result. It was great to see him break his duck. I should think it's probably more than frustrated Lando as well. The fact of that obviously now they're one win apiece. That's three races and a bounce now, as Martin Brundle said after the race. That's three races in a row that Lando could have won. Yeah. Maybe even should have won. But for one thing or another, strategy, bad starts, bad pit stop, bad luck, safety cars at the wrong time. It just seems to all have gone against him where he yeah. could have won four races and instead just got one. Yeah. But still 11 races to go. Yeah. So I've still got a while to go yet. Come on, Lando. Let's do this. So should we do the news? Do the news. So <laughs> my mate Mazda Spin. Mazda Spin. Um, the the uh, sponsorship that they have with Haas, that's now going to court, I believe. Oh, went to court. Going to court. Urikali have uh, got a £13 million pound payout and they're supposed to get a 2021 show car. Uh, we covered the story earlier on in the week. And Haas had a deadline to pay the money back and they banked it. And I don't think they've given them the car either. They've given them a the car and supposedly Yura Kali and um, Dimitri Mazepin, Nikita Mazepin's father, has threatened Haas and said, prepare yourselves. There will be action. I just hope it doesn't get all messy with silly things like bailiffs and court judgments and seizures and things. There's now Mazepin who will turn up at the trap with bailiffs. That means he's allowed to not add a year, is he? Oh, that all been dropped now. Uh, has for Matt Spin Jr. Yeah, well, we'll send not him his in. dad. We'll send him in. Yeah, just all a bit messy, isn't it? Especially it has to do quite worse. Well. It's just like you know what? Just go away. We'll pay you your thirteen million. Yeah. If you want a show car, one of our crappy cars, then have it. Yeah, we'd be crappy sponsor now, let's say. Uh, Mick Schumacher says F1 return within reach. I think he's performed very well for Alpine. Yeah, he done a test, didn't he, with Jack Doohan, and yeah. apparently come off very well in that. So I think we are more than likely to see the Schumacher name back on the grid very soon. Personally. Yeah, yeah, it looks like Mick's... If Carlos 
I don't even know where Carlos is going now and I've put no Carlos news in there now because I'm bored of it but if Carlos doesn't choose Alpha and I think Mick's the favourite yeah uh interestingly Jack Do and a few weeks ago was the favourite around a Canadian Grand Prix because they were hoping to put him in a car for the rest of the season but that all seems to have gone belly up yeah so yeah I'm sure Schumacher's going to be back on the grid uh Ocon to Haas to be confirmed that I still have yeah there was all big talk that was going to be done in Hungary. Obviously, uh, K-Mag's been announced that he's leaving. And he had that seat fitting at Williams. Yeah, that was a big one. James Vowles put his foot in it. Yeah. By turning around saying that Esteban Ocon had had a, uh, a seat fitting at Williams. To, to go halfway through the uh, after summer break. Yeah, he was going to replace Logan Sargent halfway through the season after the summer break because they wanted to see if he fits in the car. But because he's got the same sort of dimensions as uh, Albon, that would have been all right. would have been tight. Yeah. Uh, but then Bruno Famine and Flavio Briatore, I don't know how we've done it without permission, but they found out what was going on and they stopped it because they didn't want him going to another team strengthening a rival. So they stopped it. So Esteban Ocon was very, very, very close to going to Williams for the rest of the season. And I think it was ideally in the view of him signing for 2025. But then it looks like the Haas deal is going ahead and apparently Haas weren't in favour of it either. No. So we thought it was going to get announced... This last weekend, maybe it'll get announced this week now that K-Mag's announced that his time in F1 is coming to a close because I don't think he's going to get another seat elsewhere. No. Um, so maybe Esteban will get announced going into Belgium. Mm -hmm. Can't see it dragging on for much longer, it's obvious. No, the driver market at the moment is just dragging on, isn't it? Mm. Uh, Haas Ferrari deal until 2028 and then I'm, after that I reckon we'll see the return of Toyota. Yeah, it's looking more and more likely that... Um, They've got it still till 28, but don't think we're going to get Toyota engines no. yet. Looks like for 2025, I've seen a mock-up of it on uh, the YouTube channel, The Race. So check them out. God, the car looks sexy. It's like a black MoneyGram car, but then it's all got um, supported by Gazoo, Toyota Gazoo yeah. Racing, uh, which is uh, the European arm of Toyota Motorsport. So speculation is at the moment, it looks like F1 engines, maybe 2028 20, plus. Yeah. But it looks like Toyota are going to come in and help Haas with their chassis development and wind tunnel work now that McLaren don't do their wind tunnel testing there. Um, and that's going to be their toe in the water. Yeah. Um, where they're going to get involved with the Haas F1 team. Potentially, according to stories, is to replace Delara. Okay. Delara won't be doing the chassis build for Haas anymore, and also they may be maybe ahead of a Toyota Toyota union. Uh, they may be starting to pull away from Ferrari um, and pulling their base out of there and moving everyone over to Cologne instead. Yeah, which is where Toyota's wind tunnel is, isn't it? Yeah. So big speculation is this is a toe in the water for eventually them to buy shares and then eventually for them to come back as an engine manufacturer. Red Bull free driver changing. So you've got Lawson and Hajar in RB. Sonoda over to uh, Red Bull and Ricardo out. Yeah, Ricardo potentially off to Williams. Yeah. I think at the moment it's between Sainz, Ocon's out now, so Sainz, Bottas, Ocon's. Ricardo now for that second Williams seat. Problem is, is Sainz is banking on Mercedes and he's banking on Red Bull. And I think he's burned his bridges at last with Audi. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's looking like the, the speculation is that Isaac Hadge is going to get called up alongside Liam Lawson. I did see something about that Liam Lawson didn't set the world alight during his Red Bull test last week. Yeah. So maybe they've realised it's a bit too soon. He's mm -hmm. not quite ready for the big team yet, but it looks like he's going to get the RB seat. Uh, and Hadge, if he wins the F2 championship, could get the call up. Alternatively, Arvin Lindblad, who's setting the world alight in your Formula 3 Euro Series, who's 17 years old, he could leapfrog him because he's the one that Helmut Marco thinks is the next big Verstappen. Oh, God. <laughs> he's British, though, so we've got See to support what his him. communication skills are like first. He's a Brit, so I'm sure he'll be happy. Uh, Helmut Marco has committed to Red Bull till 2026. Which stops Verstappen going anywhere until 2026, basically. Yeah, apparently. So he's signed a commitment that he's going to be there till 2026. And Verstappen signed an agreement to remove the Marco clause. Apparently so, yeah. He said that 
no silly games if he gets moved out for illness or god forbid if he pops his clogs and dies or something like that he can't go and use silly clauses to get out of the team so that is mercedes interest dead this is when i did we cover it i can't remember if we covered it yeah i did didn't i brought george russell to audi yeah that's one yeah that was a bit of a surprise that was but that looks like it could be a 2020 sixth thing if mercedes can get verstappen they'll get antonelli put them two together and ship um russell off because that's I, pretty much dead uh, in the water now that they can't get verstappen in it yeah i just don't know like we were saying the other day i don't know when you've got your number one driver which would be george when lewis goes then to bring verstappen across verstappen's going to want number one driver role george will want number one driver role what the hell do you do but then also it seems quite unthinkable that a Mercedes driver would go to Audi because they hate each other. Audi and Mercedes are not friends. But, but I think Audi are getting a bit desperate because they, all right, they've got Nico Hulkenberg, who I think is probably somewhat doubting his decision in going over to um, to Stake, being at Haas are performing so well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th there's they kind of missed the boat on a number of, I think they should have got Gasly. Mm -hmm. They missed the boat on a few top candidates really. Ocon, don't rate him. I feel sorry for Haas if they you know, if it's all gonna get confirmed soon. Um and it looks like obviously Valkyrie's now edging closer to IndyCar. Mm -hmm. So you're not gonna get your calendar here. I'll like get last year's one. Be out of date, but it'll be bought last year. <laughs> all the dates will be out. Don't matter. <laughs> just have the picture. <laughs> Um, Nui to Ferrari is off what we think now because of his demands were quite high apart from his salary well 25 million pound a year on a three year deal supposedly yeah and a lot of engineers yeah I mean they were willing to, to give him a lot of money and they were even willing to allow him to work part time supposedly it's like a satellite role shares in the company as well was that right or I haven't heard that one but he wanted to bring 20 engineers over. Yeah, 20 senior engineers from Britain. And apparently that was the deal that broke it. And they were like, nah, you've got to use your talent within. Can you imagine it? If all of a sudden they've got to go home, you'd never be able to get everyone. He's got a three year contract. By the time he's signed and they've got everyone out of their gardening leave, he'll be like, I'm going now, I'm retiring now. Yeah, it was never going to work. We've just filled Marilena up with um, Brits. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know they've done well when they had Ross Braun in charge and it was a very European kind of thought rather than an Italian-led. But this seems to be the straw that's broke the camel's back. So it definitely looks like it's yeah. yes for Aston Martin because they'll probably give him anything he wants. Yeah. There's the ripped rainbow and go and get your gold. As we've covered before, Magnussen out, which I'm sure he'll confirm that probably next week or this weekend coming, sorry. Well, he's, he's confirmed it. He's oh, gone, confirmed isn't he? it, yeah. Yeah, he's confirmed he's gone. And he did comment and say that it'd be quite funny if him and Hulkenberg both end up at stake next year. Yeah. But it's unlikely to happen. And I think all indications are he's probably going to either go to IMSA, the American Sports Car Championship, or off to IndyCar. Yeah. He's had a few approaches in IndyCar. So, uh, end of the road for KMAG. And Russell Doubts Lewis would move to Ferrari. You or, covered this one, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, so he basically is saying that if Lewis hadn't of done his deal with Ferrari at the beginning of the season and left it till when we normally call silly season, which is now, now yep. he probably wouldn't have gone as Mercedes have picked up their pace, which they certainly have turned things around, and also the 2026 engines that everybody's raving about. Mm. I hope he ain't made the, right, the wrong decision. You'd hope so, but at the moment I'd be a little bit worried if I was in. But then maybe this is the difference. A couple of years ago, before Fred Vassour took over, when Ferrari would have had these bad difficulties, they would have just kept going and kept going and gone down a dark alley in the end mm. and got themselves tied up in knots. He's made the decision. We've made a mistake. Let's take all of that crap off that ain't working. Let's go and cut the steps backwards. And that's not an Italian way of doing things. Mm. So they do seem to be quite cool, calm and collected. Although they have lost months of development, and this is obviously going to be the basis of the 25 car. Yeah. But then they weren't far off Mercedes this weekend. No. So they can start getting their arse in gear a little bit, but they've got to make sure they do it before January, because then that's the cut-off period, ready for 20, 2026. Yeah. So they've got to get their arse into gear. They do, really, yeah. 
Should we move on to our Belgium preview? Yeah, so Belgium Grand Prix this weekend. The Grand Prix of 50-50 conditions. Yeah, it can rain at one side of the track and be sunny on the other side. Of the you track. like Belgium, don't you? I do like Belgium. Uh, seven kilometer track, 19 turns. Longest F track in F1. It is. Which surprised me. I thought there was a couple of longer ones nowadays. I thought Las Vegas I thought, was longer. No, I, I, I knew that was long, but I did think Singapore was longer, but it's nice. Just loads of turns loads of loads and <laughs> so slower, right slower, angles <laughs> slow uh 44 laps and bottas my mate holds the record at 1.46 1 minute 46 1 minute 46 in 2018 do you reckon he's gonna get another lap record this year what bottas yeah no oh well that's not very positive is it how long will take that oh my god 44 <sighs> laps it's a good thing isn't it 44 44 team 44 here Okay. <laughs> Lewis wants to sponsor us. I'll put a little. <laughs> Team 44. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lewis hooked me up. Um, <laughs> um, 57th Formula One race at Spa. Yeah, apparently. I can't remember the figure now. Is it. I think they said it was 87 or 97 years that they've had the premier single seat as yeah. but obviously it was one of the first races on the calendar since uh -huh. the 50s so yeah it's um, been on the calendar a long time yeah but maybe not for much longer no so the last contract year in 2025 then there's a possibility of rotation with Zanvor in 2026 which looks like it's going to be the new way i think originally the idea was this was going to be so they could get south africa on the calendar but i think there's so many countries that want to be on the calendar now the only way to do it is to start rotating it's got a bit quiet now though hasn't it because yeah. South Africa seems to have fallen by the wayside. Obviously, we've got Madrid coming in as the new Spanish Grand Prix, and Barcelona want to stay. Be another Vietnam, won't it? South Africa. Right, yeah. Um, I, love, I would love personally myself, especially if they want more Asian races. They don't need a second Chinese race. I'd love to see Malaysia back. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the big talk that Zanvo and um, Spa are going to start alternating from twenty twenty six. We'll have to wait and see. I know, but wait, they're both a home race for Max Verstappen because obviously he's half Belgian. He's half something else. I won't say that. <laughs> uh, last year was the fifth half best. A cop. <laughs> <laughs> last year was the fifth best attendance in F1 with 380,000 people attending to watch Max win. Yeah, who won last year? Max. I put this in every single week. This is only really going to get better next year. Yeah. And when we get to Singapore. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because every bloody weekend, who won? Max. <laughs> um, at the home of Michael Schumacher's first win. And I believe it's the home of... Not the home. And I believe with Michael Schumacher, I think it's when he busted up with Coulthard, wasn't it? Yeah, when he was running down the pit lane. Cracking <laughs> his things off. And stuff. <laughs> Went in there and all those Mercedes mechanics were like, whoa! <laughs> Calm down, Michael. He's like... <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, good old Michael. And um, yeah, but it was uh, the uh, the place where he secured his first win for Benetton. <sighs> Max Verstappen was born in Belgium. But well, yes, I have to cover it because it is. Max Verstappen was born in Belgium. He was. Just in case our listeners did not know that, I didn't know that actually. Yeah, born in Belgium, but obviously because his dad Jos Verstappen is Dutch. He carries the Dutch flag. So either way, if Zanvoort and Belgium do go, and he's always got a home race. And the amount of Dutch fans that are at Hungary this weekend, they're everywhere. Austria, Hungary. Austria, I knew they were going to pretty much be there because it's Red Bull's home race. Hungary, well, they just saw Mad Max, didn't they? Yeah. There is a new Mad Max film out now. Maybe he's got the main part. Uh, here's <clears throat> a fun fact for you. Bruno Senna set the fastest laps in 2012. But his uncle Anton Senna never. Um, uh, did I say Anton? Anton. Sorry. Ant who's Anton? Anton yeah. de Beck? <laughs> Strictly. Da, 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 da. Uh, uh, Ant. <laughs> Senna now, yeah. um, did despite six wins. So, yeah, Senna never did, but Bruno did. Yeah, so Bruno, that can be his only. The can only be one Bruno. Um, yeah, Bruno got his. <laughs> it's a bit musical tonight. It's something a bit different. Bruno's got the claims of fame of having his own one and only fastest lap yeah. there, but yet, yeah, despite the six wins, he's uncle Air and never got one there. Bit of a weird fact, I thought. Um, some big moments. Schumacher debuted in 2020. Huh? Schumacher. What? 
Do you make it. a debut in 1991 for Jordan? Well, you put 2021 yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, typo, <laughs> typo. Forget that one. Let's go slick. Come on. People forget. <laughs> we know what we're doing here. Yeah, we know what we're doing. Yes, get the numbers right, Tom. <laughs> put your glasses on. <laughs> well, I could put it to the camera so people can no, see No, no, you're all right, don't worry. Um, 1998. Have you got the rest of these dates right? I hope so. 1998. Uh, massive start crash. Yes, that was the worst one they've ever seen in history, wasn't it? Yeah, well, about 15 cars got knocked out somewhere. <laughs> yeah. It's just like dominoes. It's like, whoops. I always forget that one. Um, 2000, Heiken and Schumacher overtake either side of Zonda. Yeah, Zonda. remember that? Not remember that one? I don't remember that one. Yeah. Oh, how do you not remember that one? Top of Eau Rouge. They came up, Michael and uh, Mika. Michael was ahead, Mika was behind. They were both coming up to lap Ricardo Zonda. Michael went one way, Mika went the other way, and they both went round him. <laughs> and it's just like, whoa, I always remember that. And uh, 2021. 2001. 2001. Yeah. Sorry, I'll go back to your 2021 here. <laughs> uh, 2001. The John Alberti. Crash. Thought that'd be a foreign name. Uh, I don't remember that one either. Do you remember that one no. when uh, I think it was Redillion when um, how can you not remember that? He was the most unluckiest driver in F1 that year because the, uh, the couple of races beforehand, not remember at Hockenheim, he went up the back of someone, Michael Schumacher, and flipped. No, I, d I don't remember that. No, and then like two races later, he went to Belgium and he went to go and overtake Eddie Irvine. And as he went in the inside of Redillion, Eddie Irvine took his front wing and he went Vroom! full pelt straight into the barriers, and his whole car just got buried underneath the barriers. They drag him out by tractors. And I see the only other one that really sticks out for myself as well was when uh, Ricardo Zonta and uh, Jacques Villeneuve decided to see who had the biggest balls in 1999 and try and take Eau Rouge flat. And yeah. back in those days, Eau Rouge wasn't flat. No. And both of them wrote off their car in a million pieces. Uh, but also some other big crashes down there. You've had the big Alonso one. What, the first time? Yeah. When Gro was it Grosjean? Grosjean. Grosjean it? went over the top of him. Out Hamilton, Grosjean. And I think, wasn't that one of the first races that actually highlighted how much the halo had helped yes, safety? Yes, it was, because he went over the top of Hamilton, I think, as well. And Leclerc as yeah, well. I remember Leclerc. Leclerc's car was all busted. And then you had that Alonso one. Uh, not Alonso, so you had the Norris one up on the top of Rouge. Yeah, top so of Rouge. Vettel, Vettel stopped, didn't he? Yeah, he did. you're right. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, the top of Rouge, he lost it in the wet, didn't he? Yeah. That's the good thing about Spa, though. It's a proper, as you call it, base track. It's a proper race track, but dangerous. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the last fatality we had there was Antoine Hubert in yeah. Formula 2, which, obviously, I remember that because Lewis Hamilton was doing an interview That's at the it. time. And That's all credit it. to uh, one Manuel Correa, who's doing very well, in Formula 2 this year. Yeah, he's the after... one that was involved in that, wasn't he? Yeah, he's the one yeah. who hit him and shattered his feet and his That's ankles it. and it's taken him a long time to get back up there. I think it's taken him three years to get back up to the front, but he's now starting to really get some solid results in Formula 2. So all credit to him. But Antoine Hubert was the last person we sadly lost at the Belgian track. Yeah. But it's just one of those circuits that if you're going to have a crash, it's usually a big one. Yeah. So, um, and yeah. Predictions. This is the this is the money bit now. Well, I'll let you go first, as you, you, you as I've got one right so far. Okay, so logically, Lewis won for me. Remember that one? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, wait, up the ground, please, over. Uh, I'm gonna go for. It's got to bloody go right at some point. I'm gonna go Lando. Okay. I am going to go for... Don't think about it too long. It's only a 44 lap race. Piastri then. You're going Piastri? I'm going to go for Piastri. You're not going for your boy? I, I want to go for Lewis, but I'm not sure with that track. The problem is it's got that incredibly long straight. I didn't think the Sadies had an issue down the straights. I thought it was the corners. No, I think they were right. a bit draggy, aren't they? Yeah. So you're going Oscar? Yes. What are we actually going to do if it actually gets to the point where Oscar and Lando are starting to win every other race between them? It's yeah. going to get a bit dicey for the championship, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it will do, yeah. Not beyond all realms, possibly. I mean, obviously, Oscar's not going to be up there for the championship. He's too far behind. Max could, though. But if he's going to end up keep handicapping Lando and keep taking points off of him, it could get a little bit 
Tetchy. In the end, they'll probably say you've got to help him out. There's still mathematics. There's it, they'll say to him, look, he said there's no mathematical chance you can win the championship. You've got your first race. We've done that. Mm. Now team orders come into it. Ma uh, Lando can still beat Max with the championship. You need to help him out. Be a bit like Bottas did. Who Bottas was a proper team player. And they mentioned that at Hungary, didn't they? Because it was at Hungary that that year that he done it on the last it. lap, last lap. Him through. Yeah. So it was kind of a little bit reminiscent there, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So. Um, I think it'd be a good one. I don't. I haven't seen what the forecast is, and in Belgium, I don't tend to look at the I forecast. I don't tend to look at it. it. Changes too often. Yeah, it can change like in the hour. It's can't like it. it. But then in Hungary, who thought we were going to get drizzled before qualifying? Yeah. It'd been a bloody heat wave all the way up yeah. to. So and then it was hot for the race, wasn't it? Very really hot. So you just you don't know in Europe at the moment. We're supposedly for a heat wave here in the UK, and then earlier today we had a bit of rain. I didn't have any rain where I was today. Oh, I did. I'm well, just used to it in this country, though. Getting a bit wet and drizzly. So, but yeah, so there we go. That's our Hungarian Grand Prix review and our Belgian Grand Prix preview, along with our news roundup. Anything else you want to cover? So this week we have got, I'm going to get this in before you put it on me. Uh, we have got the career of, we're doing K-Mag. K-Mag before he goes, probably. Uh, um, and that's about it. We haven't got the Thursday special this week. No. no week it's, off this it's, week. It's, um, it's, it's my birthday Wednesday. It's my birthday. So, How old are you? 42? No, no, I'm not in my 40s yet, unfortunately. I'm not are near, you? I'm not, I'm not near you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Rude. Um, so yeah, I've got a busy, very busy week this week because it's my birthday my, and my dad's birthday. Uh, uh, birthday Wednesday, isn't it? And your my dad's on Thursday. Dad's on Thursday and my mum and dad's wedding anniversary for Friday. Oh, it's got a busy week this week, so all our subscribers remember to do a little happy birthday message to Tom. That'd be sweet. Just put at Tom FFTB, happy birthday. Um, so yeah, there isn't one this week, but um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, other than that, we'll keep across all the usual news that we usually do, um, and then we'll put a poll up the end of the week for next Thursday yeah. for people to vote on, because we did do the RB... Should Red Bull sell RB um, on last on last Thursday as per the vote? So that's now up for people to view. And also, you've done the career of Charles de Klerk last week, so that's now up. Um, and then, yeah, once we get past Belgium, we'll have two weeks to fill because we we'll have one week which will be a review, and we'll have another week which will be a preview for Zambor, which you don't like that circuit, so that says that all of that one. But we'll have two weeks to fill. So I think one week we're planning to do, it's not really a mid-season review, so I think what we should do is call it a summer report. Uh -huh. So we'll do a summer report where we'll go for each team. And then the week after that, I think we'll do a special, which might be something like the career of Lewis or the career of Michael Schumacher. I don't know, it's a few weeks away yet, so yeah. we'll think of something there. So we've got plenty of content coming your way. And thank you, as always, for... Um, following our channel and subscribing to us please don't forget to like the channel and also please don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already if you're new to us now um and yeah i think that's everything isn't it that is, yeah cool so we will see you next monday for our belgian grand prix review and have a great week everybody bye see you later